Hi, I am Cole, and this video is the third part of our series about text in DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. In this one, I will show you how to create incredible 3D tools like this one. Let's get started. The text video tool shares most of the features of the text plus generators, with the obvious addition of a real 3D space and that it can be extruded. If you want more information about the text plus generator, check our dedicated playlist in the description. But most important, make sure that you watch this video to the end to learn how to bring your 3D titles to an epic level. As we are dealing here with 3D, the scope of what you will learn in this tutorial goes way beyond just text and will apply to most 3D compositions. This video will also be divided into different chapters. Building a title inside the 3D space, how to add shading to make it look amazing, using lights and cameras to give our text a unique look, and finally, all these try effects that will take our 3D title to the next level. As usual, when working in Fusion, the first step is to create a new Fusion composition. For this, right-click inside the media pool and choose New Fusion Composition. Drag it to the timeline and switch to the Fusion page. As for most compositions, it is a good idea to start with a background node before we start laying out a 3D space. Add a merge node and connect it to the media art. Then, I am going to lower the background alpha to zero for clarity. Using the shortcuts in the toolbar, I am adding the 3D text to create the title, a Merge 3D to connect different elements, and a Render 3D to render a 3D scene into a 2D composite. To make the experience as smooth as possible, we need to make some changes to the renderer by switching renderer type to OpenGL so it can make use of that sweet GPU power. We also need to check the lighting box so our lights will be rendered. Okay, I am going to format this title like any other text. Let's assign our Merge 3D node to the first viewer so we can see our 3D space. As you can notice, the text inside the 3D space is clearly white as it should, but the one rendered appears to be black. There is two reasons why this is happening and why our text is different between the two viewers. And this is because, as you remember, we enabled light rendering. But right now, we actually don't have lights inside our scenes, so the our model is actually not illuminated. The second reason is that in the lighting menu, we need to activate lights. And as you can see now, both windows show the text not illuminated. Now, as you can see, we don't have any lights in our scene, and we'll start by adding an ambient light to get a global illumination. Now, both viewers are matching. I am going to set the intensity halfway and add a second light, this time a directional light which sends the light rays one way. To avoid manipulating those two lights by mistake, we're gonna get them out of the way. I am moving the directional light on the z-axis and the ambient light on the y. Our model is now better illuminated. To navigate the 3D space, you have a few options. You can pan across the scene by pressing the mouse middle button, rotate by holding the Alt key while pressing the mouse middle button, and zoom by holding the Control key while scrolling. But there are alternatives in case you are using a trackpad or a magic mouse. But really, you should get the proper one. Right now, we have a nice text, but it is as flat as an armadillo on a highway. That's a horrible reference. To change that, we are going to extrude our text using controls inside the extrusion panel. We have two options, classic and custom. Let's start adding some depth to give our text some volume. Then we'll use both bevel depth and bevel width to shape the bevel. That's already much nicer. The smoothing angle control is used to smooth the edges of that bevel, but the default values are usually fine. You can raise it if you start seeing some jagged edges along curves. But what about the custom button? This is where you can go really crazy and create a custom pattern for the extrusion. And even though it's not what I'm going for for this design, I got to show you how to use it. This spline represents the extrusion with the front face, depth, and back. You can walk inside this little window, but this is hardly ergonomic. Instead, we're going to use the spline editor to edit the extrusion. Open the spline editor, Enable the extrusion profile, and if the spline is not fully visible, zoom to fit. In here, you can go crazy and change all the aspects of the extrusion, like moving or adding new points, or even use advanced features to loop a selection of points. With this, you can create some truly unique designs. To reset the extrusion profile, right-click inside a small window and choose Reset. The cool thing is that both versions are saved, so you can switch between a custom or a classic extrusion profile. There, we have a good base, but now we can make it look a lot better by adding some shading. 
Let's jump to the shading page and start the magic. By default, one single material is used for the whole geometry. But disable this option and you'll be able to choose a separate material for the bevel. This is a quick way to add some style to your text and I'm gonna go for a nice azure green. But this is just the beginning as we can do a lot better than one solid color. I am changing type to image for both materials and the mapping level from character to world. Then I'm going to add a background for texturing and change its type from solid color to gradient. The resolution by default is way too large, so we're going to disable auto resolution and change it to something small like 5x5. Five five. I'm making a copy of this background and renaming both for clarity. One for the face and one for the bevel. To make it easier to connect them to the right input, hold the Alt key while making the connection. Choose color image for the face and bevel texture for the bevel. Let's start by the face. I'm gonna go for green to yellow. And using the on-screen control, change the direction of the linear gradient. Okay, the direction light is way too intense, so we're going to lower its intensity. Now to the bevel texture. Here, I go for a simple black to white. Okay, this is great, but I would like to add some transparency to the face texture by lowering the alpha control. Look at how the text is fading to black. And if I go to the background to bring back the alpha, we now have a seamless connection. I think we should give a bit of punch to the ambient light. Let's go to the next step by adding two extra lights and animate them. Add a spotlight and an extra Merge 3D node connected to the main one. Why adding another Merge node instead of using the main one, you'll see in a minute. Let's choose a color for the spotlight and adjust its position. I'm placing the spotlight to the top left and rotate it so it's facing the title. Wait, we can't see the spotlight. This is because in the new Merge 3D node, we need to enable pass-through lights, so the lights are passing downstream. Then I can set the spotlight decay type to linear for something natural. Lower the decay rate and raise the cone angle to maximum. The effect is hardly noticeable, but we can change that by going back to the text node and lower the specular exponent. So much better. I'm going to copy the spotlight and paste an instance by using Ctrl Shift V. With this, we just need to de-instance the translation and rotation groups to make them independent. Then invert each value so the second light is correctly positioned. Now, thanks to that extra merge node, we can easily animate those two lights without affecting other elements. We just need to add two keyframes, one at frame zero and the second one at the last frame that I'm going to set at minus 360 to create a full orbit animation. This is looking pretty good, but the thing with motion graphics is that you can always go further and add the little details that makes all the difference. Let me show you some great effects and tips. Let's add a custom camera for more creative freedom and change its position on the z-axis so we can see the title. And like for a real camera, I'm changing the focal length something wider, like 12mm, to change the perspective. Then adjust again the position. Next, the bender, which is a 3D tool that can deform any kind of 3D geometry. In this case, I'm going to set it to shear, select the z-axis, and raise the amount slider. This is looking really good and was so simple. Next, I'm going to show you one of my favorite, one that can make your title really pop. Select the renderer node and add an edge detect tool. This one is all post-processing, and this is why it must be added after the renderer. This is a little too intense, but we can easily fix this by enabling edge mask overlay. Switching to grayscale edges, and adjusting controls in the detection panel. Look at how this is complementing the design by adding so much definition. Next, we're going to give this title a great and easy retro look with an original use of the Fox 3D tool. Before the Merge 3D node, add a Fox 3D tool. Enable Show Fog in View if you want to see it inside the 3D space. Select Radio, Exponential, choose a color, and play with density until you get the right effect. Look at that. Okay, one last tip. What if I told you that we're only one click away to give this title a completely different feel? Select the camera and change projection type from perspective to orthographic. Then, with the Bender 3D tool, simply adjust the amount slider to create a wicked variant. All right, there's so much more that could be added to this video, but you should already have enough to create amazing 3D title. Give it a like if you found this tutorial useful, and we'll see you in the next video. See ya. Hey Siri, how do you spell armadillo? <laughs>